Welcome to Chart of the Day. I'm Robert Folsom. Banks in trouble are forecast from October 2022. The sudden collapse of the Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB, plus a host of related news, adds up to the biggest financial news story so far in 2023. On Wednesday, March 8th, SVB's surprise announcement said the bank needed to raise $2.25 billion to shore up its balance sheet. Within about 24 hours, SVB depositors had withdrawn $42 billion. As for how big a deal all this is, well, SVB is the second largest bank failure in U.S. history, so within hours we were hearing all is well comments from top federal officials and policymakers. But come Monday morning on March 13th, the share price of many regional banks plummeted and, according to the New York Times, the two-year Treasury yield, which is sensitive to interest rate expectations, saw its biggest one-day drop since October 1987, indicating a sudden loss of confidence. In turn, President Biden made a brief televised morning statement to assure the public that the banking system is safe. Now, that's an extremely short version of the what and the when. The broader story has a lot of moving parts, but details aside, perhaps the most important question for the individual investor is, was this foreseeable? Clearly, there's little to nothing one investor can do about a systemic banking crisis that is nothing except having the knowledge to get out of the way beforehand. And that is where this chart could have helped months ago. In fact, all the way back to October 10th, 2022. That was the day EWI's Murray Gunn showed Pro Services subscribers a version of this weekly chart of the KBW Bank Index. It's comprised of 24 U.S. bank stocks that represent money center and regional banks plus thrift institutions. Murray's commentary about this chart and about the U.S. banking sector made a couple of crucial points. First, that banks have huge holdings of bonds thanks in part to the money printing of the Fed over the past decade. Second, the bond market in 2022 had entered its most vicious bear market in history, with bond portfolios suffering massive mark-to-market losses, meaning the bonds they hold were losing value. Third, Murray noted that from its January 2022 peak, the KBW Bank Index had declined by 30%. Yet here's where the chart itself showed the true relevance of that 30% decline, namely that it had unfolded in a textbook Elliott Wave pattern. One, two, three, four, five, into the October low. What that means, Murray said, is after a bounce, another decline should ensue. Why did he say that? Because after a five-wave impulse move, a three-wave correction should follow. His final comment that day reiterated that, from an Elliott Wave perspective, the bank sector will very likely continue to decline, either after a bounce or sooner. Well, a three-wave corrective bounce is exactly what unfolded in the weeks that followed through January 30th. In turn, the decline resumed, at first slowly, but then the index price plummeted during the week of March 6th. So, on Friday, March 10th, 2023, Murray Gunn revisited the KBW index with updated chart and commentary. He observed that the three-wave correction was likewise a textbook Elliott Wave move with Wave C finishing very near the end of the previous fourth wave. His concluding remarks noted that it seems very probable that another deep decline is underway. Unsurprisingly, in the brief time since Murray's March 10th update, the KBW index has declined even further to below 80. Obviously, Murray Gunn can count fives and threes, but he sees and understands a lot more. He's a trained economist with 30 years in the business, including working for the very sorts of banks represented by the KBW index. We post his big picture commentary five days a week and as subscribers to our interest rate pro service are well aware, his insights are worth their time. Not all forecasts work out this way, although honestly, 
Murray's do seem to be just a cut above the rest. For more information on our interest rate pro service, please see the fast steps below.